click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, we have seen what do you mean by the boilings and its mechanism. We have also seen the types of boilings. Now in this topic, we are going to talk about the pool boiling. Pool boiling. To explain the pool boiling, the first thing that need to be done is to draw a diagram. So basically, pool boiling is what they have done, they have conducted a small experiment. Wherein at the center of a tub, so they have kept a tub, the fluid was water itself. So in that they have placed a platinum wire. So the platinum wire was placed inside the tank itself at the center and then a current is passed through the platinum wire. So here if I know the voltmeter reading, if I know the ammeter reading, I can find out the amount of heat that is supplied, that is Q dash can be found out. So what they have observed is, how does the fluid around the platinum wire? So let me write down, this is a platinum resistance wire. So what they have observed is, how does the fluid around it actually varies and then when does the critical heat flux occur. So for that what they have done they have kept a notation of the heat flux. So heat flux is indicated by Q double dot. So let me write this is heat flux which is nothing but the rate of heat transfer per unit area. The unit for the same is watt per meter square. So what they have done is they have tried to find out what is the amount of heat flux that is going through the wire at a particular length with respect to the change in temperature. Now remember this they have considered the change in temperature. The change in temperature is nothing but the surface temperature minus the wire temperature or the surface temperature minus the saturated temperature. Now this T sat is nothing but the saturation temperature of the given fluid. So by doing so what they have observed is the variation of heat flux with respect to temperature the profile looks something like this. Now what they have done they have tried to categorize this profile within five categories. The first one is natural convection. They have categorized the same in free convection or the natural convection. Then the nucleate boiling, then the transition boiling, then stable film boiling and radiation enhancement. So corresponding to the category or the regime they call it, we have given the name. Now this one, two, three. Now these are the names which are there given in the diagram itself. So let us look at the diagram to understand it. So in the diagram, as we can see, till 1 to 5. Now 1 to 5 talks about the delta T. Till the change in temperature stays within 5, the heat transfer rate is entirely natural. So here there is no phase transfer. All the heat transfer rate is by free convection itself. So let us write down here. This is free convection or natural convection. Now what happens at point 1? As I reach to point 1, the bubbles will start forming. The first bubble will be formed approximately at 5 degrees Celsius delta T. Now from 1 to 2, the bubbles will keep on forming onto the wire. See, it can be seen with the help of this diagram itself. The first one was natural convection where simply a hot fluid is getting upward because of the change in density and the colder fluid was going downward. So this way, Till the 5 degrees Celsius, the natural convection takes place and then second comes the onset of nuclear boiling. Now onset is nothing but the start. So this is nothing but the start of nuclear boiling. So in this what is happening, the small bubbles will be formed onto the surface. But mind it that in this region, the bubbles will never detach itself from the surface. 
Now this region is what they call is from A to B. And this region I can say that it is from let's say O to B. See if I call this point O, so O to A is nothing but your free convection and A to B is your onset of nuclear boiling. So they call O and B, onset of nuclear boiling. Then what happens after that? If I still keep on increasing the delta T, as we can see that this point B is somewhere between 10. Now what happens after that? If I still keep on increasing the temperature, the bubbles will start growing and then they will start detaching the surface. See here, as we can see, this is the region which is basically the individual bubbles will be formed and then they will start detaching from the surface and then they will start growing upward. Now this is your actual nuclear boiling. Now in this case, this region comes around point B. So around point B, the bubble will start forming and then it will start going in the upward direction. Next is the sludges and bubble formation. Now what do you mean by the sludges? Sludges are nothing but the combination of many bubbles. So they are, they can be called as bigger bubbles if you want. But what is happening in this region? In this region, if you can see that a lot of area is vacant due to the sludge bubble which have formed and again they have started moving in the upward direction. Now these small area which are formed due to the sludges, they have created a area for the heat transfer rate. Now because of this small area that is created by the sludges, the heat transfer rate may get enhanced. See the same can be seen here from A to B, we have the onset of nuclear boiling then around B to C we have the actual nuclear boiling where the bubbles have formed and then they have accumulated themselves to form, form the sludges and then they have started moving in the upward direction. Now because of this what is happening that in this region somewhere around here the value of heat transfer coefficient is the maximum. So what we want that the heat transfer coefficient to be maximum, we should stay near this region. So the, this region is what they call as the prime for the nuclear boiling. But the difficulty for this region is that of point C. Now let us understand what do you mean by point C. The point C is as you can see as I keep on increasing the delta T, my value of Q start increasing. But there comes a point, let's say it is in case of water and the platinum wire, the experiment that was conducted, if I reach to around 30 degrees Celsius, we reach to point C. Now what is happening at point C? At point C, the value of this heat flux reaches around 1 megawatt per meter square. Now this is quite high. So at this value, there is a possibility that the fluid or the temperature may get shoot up. So the temperature of the fluid will follow this kind of profile. So it will start from here and it may reach straight away somewhere here. So from delta T equal to 30, it can suddenly reach without increase in the heat transfer rate. It can suddenly reach and reach to the 1000. So now this can be a melting point of a given material. So they call this as a critical heat flux. So we don't want this point to be reached because this point may give us the burnout. So the burnout is nothing but the melting of the given surface. So we try to avoid to this region, we try, we'll make sure that the critical heat flux is not occurred. But what we want is the heat transfer rate to be maximum and that is why we need to be stayed in this region. Now this is all about the nuclear boiling. We have talked about the natural convection boiling and nuclear boiling. Now if suppose the CHF is not occurred, then what happens? Then again the next region that is formed is a transition boiling. Now what do you mean by the transition boiling? This is the other name for the transition boiling is unstable boiling. 
Now, in case of unstable boiling, basically there is no stable film that is formed. From this diagram, this part is a transition film boiling, wherein there is no as such entire film that is formed here. See, only this part, the film is formed and it is not so over here. So basically, the film is not formed entirely. Now, what is happening because of this? Now, because of this, the heat transfer rate will suddenly drop. Even if I increase the delta T, my heat transfer rate, that is the value of H, because of the lesser surface, has suddenly dropped. See, as you can see, this is the transition film boiling or transition boiling. The heat transfer rate has suddenly dropped. Till a point, let us call this point as D. So now this D comes around at 120 degrees Celsius. Now this D point is what they call as the laden frost point. Now there is a very important point that to be understood here. So let us talk about this later. Now what comes next is the film boiling. Now what is film boiling? See it can be seen from this diagram. The film boiling is where the entire surface is covered by the film. Now this film is nothing but the vapor. So it is entirely covered by the vapor itself. Now once the entire film is covered by the vapor, what is happening? Due to the increased heat transfer coefficient, the value of Q will again start increasing. So these were the four stages that you have seen and the last one was the radiation enhancement. Now once I reach to a point where I have my delta T as 1000, any further increase in delta T will obviously enhance the heat transfer rate by radiation and the value of Q dash will keep on increasing. Now this is due to here after this delta T the role of conduction and convection has decreased. It is the radiation that will be more dominant in this case. So that is all about the various boiling region that we have studied. Now let us talk about this leaden frost point. Now what is leaden frost point? This leaden frost point is the point where the bubbles start dancing. You might have seen while a dosa maker. So he tried to pour a small or few amount of water to check the surface temperature of the tawa. So basically to check the surface temperature of the surface, what he does is he tried to sprinkle some water. So after sprinkling some amount of water, what is happening? Those water droplets will start dancing over a surface or a tawa and then it will immediately vaporize. So basically what is happening? Even though the delta T is quite high, the phase change that is from liquid to vapor will not be sudden. The droplet will initially dance on the surface and then later they will get evaporated. Now this point is what they call as a leaden frost point where the heat transfer it is the minimum in this case for the highest delta T. One more thing that need to be understand is the shape of the bubble. The formation of the shape of the bubble depends on so many parameters such as the viscosity, the specific heat, then L by T. So there are so many and the most important is the surface tension. Let me call is ST. So these are the parameter on which the size and shape of the bubble will depend on. So here what they have given, in, this is the microlayer evaporation, then this is quenching, then this is small wake formation where the fluid will start coming and the bubble has detached from the surface itself. So basically here they have talked about a bit of bubble formation and then how does the bubble is rise from the surface to the top of the free surface. So these are the turbulence and here they talked about the evaporation and the condensation of the given bubble. Now this thing is not there in the detail for our academics so we will not really go in detail for the same. But the knowledge of the bubble formation is essential from the project's point of view. Now that is it in this topic. In this topic we try to understand what do you mean by the pool boiling and what are the various regimes that are formed and what are the significance of various points which are there on the graph. This graph is also called a Lukiyama graph. So the heat flux versus the delta T graph for the pool boiling is also called a Lukiyama curve. Now that is it in this topic. 
थैंक यू फॉर वॉचिंग दिस वीडियो प्लीज स्टेट विद इकेडा एंड सब्सक्राइब टू इकेडा थैंक यू